What's going on everybody? So today Mocha and I were going to be showing you how to create a task automated task creation Airtable base. This is going to automatically assign tasks to different people. Uh, if we get there we may show how to automatically calculate due dates on these tasks as well. But the idea is maybe you have a new customer. Every time you add a new customer you want to add a list of tasks with maybe some notes automatically added in on what to do with that task maybe a link that is useful for that task. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we help businesses probably just like yours create systems like this, create reporting systems, connect Airtable with other tools like uh, maybe if you're using task management in Asana or Trello, any of those, we've connected those. But without further ado, we're just gonna jump right into this video here. Uh, if you're interested in working with us, you can check out the link in the description and book a call tomorrow with our team. So this database here already has a little bit of structure to it. The key thing we're going to focus on is customers. We're going to build this task management system based on these customers. So one thing I want to include in here is that I want it to be a little bit more advanced than this so not just every customer gets one it's only customers maybe that we've won so if this was the CRM we may have like a deal stage in here and that maybe is ideally in a single select drop down so we have lead then maybe we send them a proposal and then they're closed one or closed lost as a very basic example so this is gonna be a deal stage and I want to say every time a customer moves to closed one, I want to generate a list of tasks for them. We'll just use a short list of tasks. There will be a limit on what we're showing you today. It's limited to 100 linked records, so you can only add up to 100 tasks easily with what I'll show today. But as long as your task list is under that, you should be good. Uh, and that would be like for every new customer you add, you can generate up to 100 tasks for that customer automatically. So the first thing we're gonna build out is we're gonna build out the tasks table. So if I insert a field to the right, I'm gonna link this to a new table. And this is gonna be tasks. So if I go to the tasks table now, I see each task in here is just linked to one customer. And most of the time tasks have a status, uh, not done and done, just as a very basic example. A lot of time tasks have a due date. Tasks also may have a user that is responsible for that task. They often also have notes. And then maybe there's also instructions and instructions is just going to be a text field. Maybe we'll also include a link, which is a URL field. So this is what the tasks should look like. Uh, one other thing that will be very useful for you is if these tasks need to be completed in a specific order, or you want them to be shown in a specific order, not related to their due date, we're going to include an order field here like this. So it's just going to be a number with the order. So this is the task list, like where the tasks are actually gonna be created and linked to each customer. You have the option of doing what I'm about to show you all on this one table, but I usually like keeping this separate, that way the team doesn't get confused in what they're looking at. So I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna duplicate this table. I'll duplicate the records as well. And this is gonna be task templates. Uh, task templates is going to be used for every time I add a new customer. This is where it's going to pull from what my template is. So I'm actually going to, the field in here, customers is not needed. And pro tip, when you delete a linked record, you should also go back here to this other table and delete the opposite version of that linked record here. So in task templates, things I would want to define is I want every task to start off not done. Maybe sometimes there may be a status of NA as well. Uh, I will, in this example, the most basic version, we're not gonna be pre-filling in a due date, so we don't have to worry about that. 
I may want to set a standard user on these tasks. So maybe this is, we're just gonna use very basic names here. Task one, task two, task three, and task four. You would include like the short name or description of your task there. We also don't need to pre-fill in notes because that's just notes on the completed task, but we may fill in instructions, a link, and an order. So the order will fill in as one, two, three, four. I want them to be displayed in this order. And actually maybe to show this off, we'll switch the order like that so that NA is in the middle. So instructions, I'm just gonna add some basic text here. I'm gonna add a link on this one just to show how this works. So what I wanna say is every time a customer goes into closed one, I want them to have a list of tasks generated that pulls from this. Also one quick note is this is only gonna work the first time they go to closed one. And if you update the list of tasks, the task templates here, it's not gonna retroactively update all customers that you previously had. So that's just a few assumptions we're making when building this system out. It's possible to do that stuff, but in the simplest example, we're just gonna go with this. So basically I wanna say, if this John Doe here goes to closed one, I want it to copy these task names right here. I want it to go into the tasks table and link to John Doe here. Fill in the task name, use our default statuses. Due date will be empty. And then this should work for as many customers as we want. So the majority of this is gonna be done in an automation. Once you have that database structure set up, we'll add an automation that will be generate task lists for new customers. So this is gonna work based on when a record matches conditions. I'm gonna say when a customer, so choose the customers table, and then when their deal stage is closed one. So I'm gonna choose John Doe here as our test record. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, go find the task records to use. So use the task templates table for this. And you could either choose a condition or a view. In this case, I'm just gonna use the view because that seems easiest. Uh, conditions would be useful if you have like different task. If you wanted to make the user select a task template that may be different. So if in your task templates table, you add a group of here's when they're closed one, here's a list of tasks when they're in the proposal deal stage, you could have different task lists for each stage if you wanted to. In this case, it, I'm just using all tasks as the most basic example. So if I test that, I see, okay, I found these four tasks. And now what I wanna do is I wanna add a way to where this only triggers once for every new customer. So I'm gonna go back to the customers table. I'm gonna use the word dev, to stands for developer, to scare people away from messing with this field. It's gonna be a checkbox and it will say task list generated. This is gonna be the way where we know which customer has had this. In case it goes in and out of closed one multiple times, it should only generate the list of tasks once. So now I'm gonna go back to our trigger and I'm gonna say only trigger if they're in closed one and their list of tasks has not been checked yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do once somebody goes into closed one is I'm gonna go check that box. So I'm gonna add this action here and say update the customer record using the record ID from the trigger. So that's gonna, if you use the little blue plus, that lets you pull anything from a previous step. So we're gonna use the record ID from that step. I'm gonna use that field and check the box. So as soon as somebody goes into closed one, it's gonna go check their box first, and then it's gonna go find the records in the task templates. Now this is a new feature that Airtable added that we'll use next, which is called a repeating group. What this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through every task and create or every item in the, ta every record in the task templates table. And it's gonna create a record 
in the tasks table. So I'm going to use repeating group. It's going to ask us to let, select an input list and we're going to choose the find record right here. So if I choose find records, it'll allow us to use that as a list and I'm going to go ahead and test that. So that gave us these four items in this input list and now we can go to the next step which we have to define repeat for every item in that list. What, is, what do we want it to repeat? We want it to create records. So we'll add another action. We'll say create a record. It's going to create a record in the tasks table. Now we have to add which fields do we want to fill in. So we want to fill in the name field, the customer field, the status field. If you remember we left the due date out of that but we will fill in the collaborator hopefully we left that one the instructions the link and the order so to fill in each of these now we we'll use this little blue plus and we'll pull most of these from the repeating list which is where it says current item so here I'm going to use the name from the task templates I'm going to skip customers we'll do that one last Status, I'm gonna, since that's a single select, I have to change it to dynamic. And we're gonna say in the status field, use our default status. You click into the status field because it's that single select, it lets you use any of these options. We'll choose the name, not done. The collaborator, I'm again gonna make dynamic. And we should be able to use the collaborator from that list of tasks. In this case, I've always done email. You could try using the ID, but let's do email. Instructions will work just very similarly. The link will work very similarly to instructions. So use the little blue plus, find your link. And then the order will change to dynamic and it should work very similarly again. All right, that should be pretty much it. If I go back to data now and I go to customers and I choose Okay, so one note is when you do that, this is a common misconception with the automations. When I turn that on, it's not gonna run for everybody that currently matches those conditions. It's not gonna run for them automatically. We'll only run for new records that match those conditions. So you don't have to necessarily worry about it running on all of your historical records unless you go like paste a bunch of data and it matches it once it's on. Um, so let's go back to data now and let's choose closed one here. If we go to the tasks table, we should see a bunch of records populate. I see it didn't link to the customer. So that must have been an automation setup error on my end. That's because we left that out. Okay, so back to the customer field. What should go in this one? So we'll use the little blue plus box. Here you're going to choose so it's important to understand your automation. So this triggers off of the customer's table, updates the customer, then goes to task templates, repeats for every item in the task template, and then creates a record in tasks. So the customer's linked record field should use something from the customer, which is in either this step or this step currently. So I'm gonna choose from when a record matches conditions, the trigger, I'm gonna pull in the record ID from our triggering record. So if I add that in there and click update. Now, let's go ahead and delete all of these. Go back to customers. And I'm just gonna uncheck this box. So now it should run again for that customer. Now you'll see it ran for Jane Smith. Good example will be if we group by this field I always get a lot of satisfaction out of doing, out of seeing this. So we're gonna type in a few tests. Test one, test two, test three, test four, test five. And we're just gonna drag this down. So use the little plus box, drag closed one down. Now we should see a lot of magic happen in here where it populates a bunch of lists of tasks really fast for all of our new customers and that's how you use a list of task templates to generate a bunch of tasks now a common question i got I actually got this from a customer with this same setup 
was what's the difference between the columns and the task templates and the columns and tasks. Uh, for example, they had certain columns in one but not columns in the other. Does that matter? So this is actually set up by design. In this case, we're not pre-filling in certain things like the due date. So in your task templates to keep it straight so that you don't get confused, I leave certain fields out like the due date and things that are only relevant to a task that's assigned to a customer. So if you're wondering like why are certain fields in the task templates but certain or why are certain fields in tasks but not in task templates? Task templates need just the bare minimum to create new tasks. And so the due date in this case is not relevant. The notes field is not relevant. And in the next video, I'll cover how to use the same system but automatically calculate those due dates. Uh, so you have to have some sort of way to do that. Uh, some systematic way like based on a date field to do that but uh, assuming that works out we should be able to do this so let me know if you have any questions on this and i'll see you in the next video you can click right there in the end screen to see how to automatically calculate those due dates see you there